This is Sum, one of the best controller players for the team in RG. If you spent any time watching his stream, you'll see that his elite level crosshair placement is what separates him from the rest. Now, in this video, we're gonna be explaining crosshair placement in four different levels, starting from beginner level and making our way up to pro. Let's start off with Nier, who's ranked bronze and is playing Jet on Bind. One thing that we'd like to point out with Nier's crosshair placement here is that they have a solid understanding of keeping their crosshair at head. Head level. Even though this is a very common tip that many pros will tell you to follow, it's always great to see that even at the beginner level, there's a clear understanding of this crucial first step to having solid crosshair placement. However, this is just the beginning of our hero's crosshair placement journey. Let's hop into the second round of this match to see where Nier could make some improvements. Need help. Nier starts the round by slowly creeping their way towards showers while keeping themselves safe by hugging the left wall to have some cover as they move up. Something worth noting is that they also had heard that Omen used their teleport during the beginning of the round, meaning that Omen is likely playing somewhere in or around showers. But this is where they make their first mistake. Nier fails to clear this initial close left corner angle. Generally, if you're playing quickly towards showers, the defenders actually don't have time to make it to this corner without being spotted. But since our hero chose to approach showers slowly, the amount of time needed for the attackers to get into this position unnoticed is now possible. After passing this first initial corner, they push deeper into showers and begin to turn to their right to clear the cubby. This is when some unfortunate timing happens, as the enemy sage actually makes a footstep right when Nier was about to clear the right side. This footstep startles Nier and pulls the crosshair placement to the left side. This results in near dying to the omen who actually was tucked into the right corner. The main point we want to highlight here though is the lack of understanding that there are many more corners to clear than they actually realize as they push into showers. If we take a look at another round where near is clearing showers, we can see that they still are failing to clear this close left angle whenever enough time has passed that it can be a threat. Near did a great job of clearing this right corner angle this time, but is caught off guard by the same once again finding a great timing. However, this doesn't excuse Nier's behavior in not clearing this close left corner. Let's take a look at one more round of Nier in showers. Spike. Nice going for it. Nier goes through the same motions of not clearing this close left corner, but does clear the right corner, which is good. But they make one more crucial mistake with their crosshair placement, and that's peeking out around this corner without clearing all of the common angles one by one. When clearing this section of showers, the most common angle someone may be holding is behind the doorway into A site, since it gives the defender some cover and an easy escape route. On top of this, Nier fails to clear both of these two corner angles. These angles are much more common than people would expect due to how they also provide cover from the attackers that are in A site coming from short. Whenever you're clearing showers by yourself, try to emulate this crosshair placement since it'll set you up for fighting all of these common positions much easier. Much of what goes into crosshair placement is not your ability to control your crosshair, but rather having the knowledge of common positions that people will play and then setting your crosshair placement up to peek at those spots one by one. A super useful technique for this is to prepare the swing, where before you peek into an angle, you pause to prepare yourself physically and mentally for the peek, and then you swing. It simplifies the aiming process, allowing you to focus on the things that honestly just really matter in the game. And if you wanna learn more about this specific technique, then I suggest you check out our brand new Spider Method course over at Skillcapped, which focuses on teaching players actionable habits that they can apply in every single one of their gunfights to become far more consistent with their aim. This course is already receiving incredible reviews from our users, saying that it's exactly what they needed to start improving again. 
Even better, your subscription to Skillcap gets you access to a free VOD review every single month in our Discord so that you can get directly connected with a top-tier coach and get one-on-one -on -one feedback with some of the best in the industry. And it's all backed by a rank-up insurance policy. So if you don't improve while actively using our service, you're going to get your money back and we don't ask any questions. We do this because it's really important to us that our service works. And if it's not working, then you shouldn't pay. So if you're really looking to excel, be sure to check out Skillcapped using the link below and we'll help you level up your crosshair placement. Let's move on to round 14 of this same match. Our hero Nier has positioned themselves into a fantastic off angle for a site. After a few moments, Nier's team pings that there's a couple of enemies outside of Hookah, with the minimap confirming this to be true by showing the Sage and Harbor. With two attackers being spotted on the map, Nier begins to rotate towards b site, but this is where Nier makes a mistake. Take a moment to try to answer this question here. What mistake did our hero make here in regards to their crosshair placement? The mistake here is that Nier had lost focus on their own crosshair placement when they began to rotate. If we take a closer look at the mini-map, the only information that has been shown is that there are at least two enemies toward Hookah and that Nier's Sage is pushing through short A. So there are technically still three of the enemies unaccounted for, as well as an area of the map that hasn't been fully cleared yet, which is Showers. Ideally, while Nier rotates towards b side, they should be focusing their crosshair placement on showers just in case an enemy was present. In this scenario, if there was an enemy who was in showers, our hero has basically a near 0% chance of winning the duel because of where they're aiming. This may seem like a minor thing here, but it actually stems from a very common mistake that many beginner players make, and that is the inability to multitask with their crosshair placement. Our hero here loses focus on making sure their crosshair placement is facing potential threats because they're so tunnel visioned on the concept of rotating to B-site. A skill you must develop with your crosshair placement is the ability to simultaneously act on an action, such as rotating or even picking up an ult orb while making making sure that your crosshair placement is still focused on areas where potential threats can be, no matter how unlikely. To drive this point even further, let's take a look at round 15. Our hero and their team are in a 4v2 retake on B site, where their weaponry is quite weak. While in elbow, Nier's teammate falls victim to the enemy Sova and, in the process, drops their marshal to the floor. As soon as this happens, Nier's crosshair placement fixates on the dropped weapon and they immediately start walking towards it. At this very moment, the enemy Sova peeks out of the smoke and proceeds to miss a couple of shots, but ultimately finds the kill onto our hero. As you can see, Nier's inability to multitask the goal of retrieving the weapon while also preparing their crosshair placement towards where the Sova would likely peek from made it so that they weren't prepared to take on this fight. Instead, if our hero had focused their crosshair placement towards the edge of the smoke while simultaneously moving forward, they could have achieved both goals of preparing for a fight and grabbing the weapon. When it comes to crosshair placement, don't always look where you're thinking, but rather look at where potential threats may come from as you act on whatever ulterior goal you may have. For our intermediate level, we have Mamba, who's ranked Plat and is playing Reyna on Haven. Once we get to the intermediate level, the vertical crosshair placement gets much more consistent, but there is a common mistake in regard to how people place their crosshair on the horizontal plane. To explain what we mean by this, let's hop into round 10 of this match. After a successful C site execute, our hero's team finds themselves in an essentially already won round. All they have to do now is just hold the advantage they have in this 4v2 post plant. Our hero uses this opportunity to push themselves toward the defender's spawn. Mamba opts to play near this long corridor in hopes of catching a defender who's rotating off guard, which isn't a bad play. Just like our hero expected, the enemy Rays appears right in front of them and then land a frag. Although the result was our hero fragging the rays, if we actually take a more critical approach to how our hero had taken this fight, we can see that they actually had to readjust their own crosshair quite a bit to finish the kill off. If we slow down the clip once more, we can see that Mamba's first shot was a bit off and was lagging behind where the raise actually was. This is due to a common issue that many intermediate level players make, which is placing their crosshair way too close to the corner. 
Many players overestimate a couple of factors that inform them to place their crosshair so tight. The first is that every person that will peek into you won't peek as tightly as you believe they will. Especially when you aren't playing at the highest level, the enemy will peek much wider than you expect due to many factors. But the most common being that enemies don't really believe they're peeking that wide, but they don't have the mechanical skill to do pixel perfect peeks. The second is your own reaction time. We aren't robots that have a 10 millisecond reaction time, so we have to readjust our own crosshair placement accordingly so that we have an appropriate amount of time to react. The horizontal distance from the corner of your crosshair directly correlates to how much time you need in order to shoot your gun so that you can hit the perfect one tap without readjusting your crosshair. If our hero had taken these concepts into consideration, they would have moved their crosshair a bit further away from the corner to give themselves a much easier shot rather than setting themselves up for an almost impossible shot to hit. In general, gluing your crosshair to the corner you're holding isn't ideal. Another player we're going to be looking at for our intermediate level is Sheps, who's ranked plat and is playing Viper on Bind. In round 7, we see that our hero is in a 4v5 retake and is making their way out of pipes. As they approach the site, they're met with a peculiar cipher cage next to U-Haul. Not paying much attention to it, Sheps runs towards backside and focuses their crosshair on showers. Unfortunately, the cipher's cage dissipates and the enemy cipher is actually pushed towards the edge of it, finding a frag onto Sheps. This is a common situation where game sense informs proper crosshair placement. Generally, when there's a smoke, especially if it's the enemy smoke, they'll attempt to push through the smoke by moving through the edge of the smoke. This is because peeking out of the edge of the smoke generally gives you the least amount of disadvantages when exiting as well as helps isolate fights. Our hero in this clip wasn't expecting the cypher to make this sneaky play and he died for it. So whenever you're faced with a smoke and there's a possibility that an enemy may be in it, hold your crosshair placement for the edges of the smoke rather than the center of it. Even in round 12, the exact same situation occurs again where the enemy cypher throws a cage and our hero falls for it again. Ensure this doesn't happen to you in your own games by placing your crosshair on the edges of smokes in anticipation of plays like these. For our advanced level, we have Dorshi, who's ranked Ascendant and is playing Brimstone on Fracture. Once you get to these higher ranks, the majority of players here have pretty great crosshair placement overall. So because of this, the main way people find advantages is instead of having better crosshair placement, they make their enemy's crosshair placement worse. To give an example of this, let's take a look at round 10 of this match. After our hero kills the enemy Viper, they're now in a 1v2 post-plant situation. The location of the rays is unknown, but the Cypher just recently showed their location by making some noise and using their camera. With the help of their teammates paying, they now know that Cypher is stuck in the right side cubby, knowing that they have to find some kind of equalizing frag to turn this 1v2 into a 1v1, they push towards the Cypher looking for a fight. This is the moment where the enemy Rays goes for a jiggle peek and pre-fires their Sheriff. This may seem a bit odd to newer players, but the main goal of the Rays was not to try to find a kill on a Dorshi, but rather to startle our hero and to charging their crosshair placement off of the cypher and towards herself. This is a play that many higher level players make where they attempt to use their own presence to throw off the enemy's crosshair placement so that their teammate can peek into the enemy knowing that their crosshair is directed towards their teammate rather than themselves. Sadly for the enemy team, our hero doesn't flinch in the face of this bait and commits their crosshair placement fully to the cypher who's likely to peak very soon. As planned, the cypher swings out and dies. The situation is now a 1v1 post plan. Our hero quickly makes their way to the spike and fake defuses. After the fake, they choose to crouch walk to the right side. Knowing that the raise is on the left side of B main, they focus their crosshair placement towards that side as they continue to go as wide right as possible. The raise peeks out almost immediately and dies. This small interaction here shows how Dorshi used anti-crosshair placement 
to win this clutch round. If we pay close attention to this last interaction, the reason why Dorshi moves to the right immediately after fake diffusing the spike is to make it so that when the rays does peek out to check if the spike is being diffused or not, their crosshair placement would be not prepared for the positioning our hero was in compared to where the rays actually wants to look at. The rays is forced into a spot where if they peek out towards the spike, Dorshi is already out wide and is ready to take a duel, whereas the raises crosshair placement is prepared for a fight much closer to the spike. Going out wide like this also makes it so that the rays will peek out much wider than they'd like to, exposing way more of their body, which makes the shot much easier to hit. This round is a fantastic example of how both the enemy team and our hero used anti-crosshair placement in an attempt to find advantages to win out the key duels. To show a much simpler application of how to use anti-crosshair placement, let's take a look at another match from Dorshi who's playing Brimstone on Bind. After the spike is planted in a 4v4 situation, our hero makes their way towards short to cover any flankers to come. Thankfully, the Killjoy turret alerts our hero that a defender is flanking from Market. Knowing that the rays has to come out of the doorway that connects Market and Short, our hero positions themselves in an off angle. For those who don't know or would like a refresher on the topic, an off angle is an angle that's an unlikely position to play that usually falls in between more common angles so that when the enemy peek into those common angles, they're caught off guard. This specific off angle is for punishing anyone who's attempting to clear the close corner angle that's right next to the entrance. If we go back to the clip, we can clearly see that the enemy rays peeks out to clear this corner angle that's right next to the off angle that we've established. The crosshair placement advantage was just enough to give our hero the winning edge in this duel. Using whatever methods possible to throw off the expectation of your opponent's crosshair placement is crucial in finding way more kills once you get into the higher levels. Once you've reached the pro level, much of what differentiates your average advanced level player and a pro when it comes to crosshair placement is mostly just the refinement of the pre-existing concepts that both parties understand. Nevertheless, there are some small tricks that pros use to help find advantages here and there when it comes to crosshair placement. For our pro level, we're going to be taking a look at how Som misdirects his opponent's crosshair placement in this Haven match. In the middle of the third round, Som is in a 2v2 where they make a plan to push through B site to A site. Taking advantage of this moment, Som makes his way up Heaven and asks his teammate to plant for Heaven so that he can have a strong position for the post plant. Now, as he turns his back, he actually catches a tiny glimpse of the chamber. Knowing that the chamber will likely push Som to clear Heaven to make the retake a bit easier, Som positions himself into an off angle that's near the window. Pay attention to how his off angle is not playing in one of the corners of the room because these are way too predictable. He puts himself somewhere in the open room, but also adds an extra element of anti-crosshair placement by crouching. At the Radiant and Pro level, every player's crosshair placement will be at head level 99% of the time. To counter this, Sum adds a crouch as an extra layer to his off angle because he knows this slight change in elevation to his head will add a little more variance to the enemy's crosshair placement who's assuredly aiming at head level. To really drive this point home, here's another example of a crouching off angle used by Tens. He's crouching pretty much in the middle of the room, not in any of the common corners or angles. Right when the enemy Reyna walks in, all he has to do is click and the fight is already over. To bring it back to some though, he places his crosshair not too wide but not too tight from the corner and lands a perfect headshot onto the chamber. Following this, some drops out of heaven and fires a shot to cover the landing noise. The enemy omen throws a lurk smoke onto A site which gives some a pretty good idea that he's likely pushing from CT spawn and there's a tiny gap on the left side of this smoke, so some chooses to hold it and lands another perfect headshot onto the omen. But the key detail here is that if you look at where the omen was looking, he was still aiming towards heaven. This act of repositioning and using a neat trick of covering his landing noise with a shot made it so that the omen's crosshair placement was completely off. Always attempt to reposition yourself away from your last known location because this is likely where your enemy will be checking first. Even if it's just a difference of a few meters, that small change could be just enough anti-crosshair placement to win your next fight. 
If you can keep your position unpredictable, your opponent's crosshair placement will never be set up to take a proper fight. Why take an even duel when you can make it an easy duel by forcing your opponent to look in another direction instead? If you focus on your crosshair placement and your anti-crosshair placement, you'll start climbing the ranks in no time.